So today I'm checking out Retro Arch for PC and we're looking at setting up Sega Mega CD. So in this setup guide, I'm going to show you how to import your Sega CD collection as well as converting .bin and .q files into .chd for nicer looking files in our games collection. I'm also going to be looking at save states and load states as well as adding bezels as you can see on screen right here. So really this is the definitive all in one guide for Sega CD on Retro Arch. So Check this one out. Okay then, so for our start stage Retro Watch and Sega CD or Mega CD setup guide, just make sure to hit notification, subscribe and like, it really helps my channel out a great deal, plus it gets you up to date retro emulation content as I upload it pretty much every day nowadays. So we're looking at the Sega CD or Mega CD as it's commonly known as, and first of all we're going to look at file extensions. So what I'm going to do is just go to my Sega CD folder. Now there's a couple of different routes we can go down. If you've ripped your Sega CD game and you have got lots of dot bins and you've got a dot Q file, let's just face it, this looks terrible and it's messy. So if we come out of here and we look at this one just here, which is the awesome Final Fight CD, this is called a dot CHD file and this is pretty much compressed all of those dot bins and dot Q into one single file. So I've got a really nice way for you to convert your dot bins and dot Q into this dot CHD. So what we're going to do first is head over to this website and I'll leave the link in my description for this one. And we need to download some software called CHD man. If we just download this, you're going to download a CHD man dot zip folder. If we go inside of here, We've got several different contents inside. So to use this to convert our .bins into that .chd file extension, which is gonna give us a nicer, neater look. What we're gonna do is go to where our games are located. And in this case, as we can see, I've already converted Final Fight. So we're gonna open up Sonic CD. What we're gonna do next is drag the chdman.exe plus the Q GDI ISO to CHD back, just drag those and put them inside of that bin folder and just double click on the back and it's now converting as we can see we've even got a percentage in how much has been complete so just wait patiently for this to work. And there we go, the process has now been complete. And if we just scroll down, we're gonna find Sonic CD has now been converted to that .chd. So we can delete everything by pressing Ctrl and A and just left click on the Sonic CD .chd. Just delete everything. And what I'm gonna do now is just right click on that Sonic CD .chd, make a copy of it, and I'm gonna put it out here. So right click, paste, and now we can get rid of that messy scruffy sonic cd folder containing all of those loose bin files okie doke so what we're going to do next and now we've established how to convert our bin files into chd we can now delete the chd man.zip what we're going to do then is actually set you up with retro arch and sega cd so first thing we need to be aware of is that we need some BIOS files, and this is the naming convention. So we got BIOS CD, E, J, U. So we got European BIOS, Japanese BIOS, and American BIOS. What I'm going to do is just hover over these, left clicking, and make a copy of these. Now, once they've been copied, we're going to right click on the RetroArch shortcut, open file location, and this brings you into your directory for RetroArch. If we just scroll up, we're going to find a system folder, which is just here. Just go into that folder and paste those BIOS files. Next up, what we're going to do next is actually open up RetroArch. And the core what we're using today, and let's just remind ourselves that cores are pretty much emulators, but they're specifically designed to run with RetroArch. So we need to download a core to run our Sega CD or Mega CD games. So from the main menu, we're going to go to Online Updater. We're going to go to Core Downloader, and this is going to fetch the complete core list. 
So the core that we're using to power our Sega CD games today is the awesome Genesis Plus GX. So just scroll down and we're going to come across that. So once you've found your Genesis Plus GX, you're going to have a couple of these. we got GX White and a Genesis Plus GX. I'm going to select this one that I'm highlighting. If I just download that one, you're going to notice there's now a hashtag appears that just tells us that that one's been installed into our RetroArch system. So if we back out of here and back out again, what we're going to do first before anything else is we're going to load up a game. We're going to load up the Sonic CD game. The test that's working has been converted correctly. So load content. And from here, we're going to need to tell RetroArch where the game's located. So in my case, it's on my C drive. And if you've got yours on your desktop too, it's going to be under users. And then the name of your computer, mine's Jamie. And then we're going to go to desktop to find the game. And then from here, we can see my Sega CD folder containing my games. So I'm going to select Sonic CD, the game I've just converted. Okay, cool. So as we can see, everything's working just fine and that conversion is also working just fine. So let's actually import our games into RetroArch for easier access. So once we're inside the quick menu, if we just scroll down, go to import content. And from here, what we're going to do next is go down to manual scan content directory. We now need to point again to where our Sega CD games are located. So C drive users name of my computer jamie and i'm going to select desktop and sega cd i'm going to go to scan this directory then if i press up on my d-pad it's going to take us to the bottom press on start scan scan complete if we back out we can now see our sega cd folder so we're going to go over this time i'm going to go to final fight cd and select this one I'm going to go down to set core association. Now we've only got one core to support the Sega CD games. If you've got many, then select the relevant core so it boots automatically using that core. So now we've imported our games, we can easily access these. So Final Fight. And as we can see, that's extremely pixelated. So we can smooth this up. If we just enter into the quick menu again, I'm pressing on my Google Stadia button. If we go down to core options, from here, we can go down to video and we can change the aspect ratio from this section. So if we go in here, we can change it to four by three. Let's back out. And let's just remind ourselves that Sega CD games technically were designed for 4 by 3 ratios. If we back out of here and we go down to settings, we're going to go to video, scaling, we can turn integer scaling on. That's going to compress our picture, but it's going to give it a bit more of a blur and not so much pixelation. Let's check this out. Yeah. 
So as we can see, a little less pixelation. We're going to go back to settings, video, scaling. This time, let's go down to integer scale over and turn this one off. Go back into the game. Okay, let's actually make this game look really awesome. So we're going to go back to settings, video, scaling. We're going to go to aspect ratio and this time I'm going to select full. So what we're going to do is got the inter scale, turn this one on and make sure inter scale over scale is off. Let's quickly go back into the game. Okay, looking a little bit better. So settings again, video, scaling. This time I'm going to go to buy linear filtering and as it says, this adds a slight blur to the image to stop them, the pixels. And that's going to quickly reboot. And as we can see, that's beginning to look a little bit better. This time we're going to look at adding some filters to this. So let me show you what I mean. If we go back to the settings menu, video, right at the bottom, you're going to find video filter. If we go into video filter, we can then add things like scan lines, whatever. So lots here to choose from. I'm going to randomly select this scan line. It's going to reboot. Quick menu, resume. And let's come back out again and this time we're going to go back to scaling for the last time go back to aspect ratio and just play around with these settings until we find something which is suitable so like i said just a minute ago technically these games were made for a four by three aspect ratio So pretty cool stuff. So let's just save our settings. So we're going to go to quick menu to save our settings for this particular game. And we're going to go down to core options, manage core options. Now we've got two choices there to save those video settings and everything else we've done. If we go to save game options just here, this will be applied to just this particular game. If we go down to save content directory options, it's going to save these settings for every Sega CD game we play. So for this, I'm going to go to save content directory options, core options, file, create successfully. Now what I'm going to do next is just exit this game. So close. And I'm going to open up the Sonic CD game. Now this should then have those same video settings. So run. Cool, so as we can see, the same video settings has now been applied to this. Let's look at save in load states. So if we just access the quick menu, like I say, I use my Google Stadia button for this. We go down to save states. We're gonna to go to save state. And just go back to quick menu again, load state. Cool stuff. And let me just remind you that for this particular game, we got what's called state slot. We can then choose a different state slot. So this one has currently been saved to slot zero. If we go to slot one, we can save state from here. Go back to quick menu. And we now got the option to load from where we saved from slot zero, or we can go to slot one and load the state from this. So if we then go back to state slot zero, load state. Okay, so next up we're talking about retro achievements. So retro achievements is something that we can implement into RetroArch with particular games. 
Retro Achievements is a free website and it gets you little points for doing certain tasks in games like this one. So to make this happen, we're going to go to Settings. And if we scroll down, we're going to find Achievements. We're going to turn this on. Now you need to go over to the Retro Achievements website, sign up, which is absolutely free, enter your username and password in these sections. So once you've signed up and you've logged in to Retro Achievements through RetroArch, we can scroll down and we can unlock sound. So every time you earn an achievement, you'll get a sound to pop up. Some pretty cool stuff there. Okay, next up, we're gonna look at adding some bezels to make our games look even better. So we're gonna go down to the list of Sega CD Go to Sonic CD and then just scroll down until you see on screen overlay. This is going to be turned off by default. Turn this on. Overlay preset. We're going to go to borders. We can go to Mega Drive animated border and select this one and go back into the game. And of course, we can add lots of different borders. And of course, if you want to save these same borders to everything, we're just going to go to the quick menu, core options, manage core options. And we're going to remove content directory and save content directory just to update this. If we come back out and we want to add a different bezel to this, on screen overlay, overlay preset, parent directory to come out. And we got lots of different CFGs here to explore. So for example, we can go down to TV Integer. As long as that's selected, we're gonna come back out. Quick menu. And that's it for today's Retro March in Mega Sega CD setup guide. So if you like what you see today, be sure to hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss any upcoming content that I upload every day. Also be sure to join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. Check out everything I do on my channel. There's likely something there you're looking to set up and I've done it. But anyways, until next time, stay retro.